met everybody when they walked in. <laughs> My name is Denise. I work for Reddington Fairview, the hospital in Skowhegan. We're an organization underneath them uh, called Somerset Public Health. So your pens actually say Greater Somerset Public Health Collaborative, but we made our name a little bit easier to understand. So keep those pens because we're trying to get rid of them. <laughs> so does anybody have any questions before we kind of jump into all the fun nutrition stuff and then we'll start cooking? Um, I actually don't know where the bathrooms are, but feel free to get up and just leave. around, the, around, just the, around, the, the, around the corner. You could down the end of the hall and right door. Perfect. And just right around the corner. So ask those two ladies if you do need to know. <laughs> um, but feel free to get up and go at any time. Um, doesn't offend me. You can the other question is, is, do you know Heidi from the cardiac rehab? Yeah. I don't. Our, we're actually yes. located downtown. Um, we're next, across from Variety Drug, next to the Chamber of Commerce. We're across from Skills. From the hospital. Across from Skills. You work with Bill Primerman. Yes, yeah, he's okay. my boss. Yeah, just tell him Pam Tweedy said hi. I will tell him that. Thank you. <laughs> he's on a little mini vacation, so. Oh, good for him. Yes. Um, so, these are the dates of all of our classes. So, just a quick note. Um, the third class, we do, we're going to do a tour of Hannaford, um, so it's not like this is where everything is, because um, most people probably know that, because if you guys shop there, you know where you're going. Um, it's more about tips, tricks, budgeting, all that kind of stuff, um, and then at the end we do a $10 challenge, and you'll use some of the things that you've learned in class so far to prepare, and from the tour, to prepare a meal for under $10. So it's usually the fifth class, but I'm away on vacation. Um, I'll be at a wedding. So my boss is going to fill in for me, so he'll meet you guys there that day. We don't even meet here. We just all meet right at Hannaford. Um, does anybody have a preference? We usually do it in the town that we're in, which would be the Madison Hannaford, but if everybody shops in Skevigan, No, I go to Madison. Madison. Madison? I go to Madison. Okay. So we will do it at the Madison Hannaford, um, and we'll meet right there. And I'll give you guys a couple of reminders, and I'll make him wear some sort of funny hat so he... You guys can wave him down, and you can give him a hard time too. That's fine. Um, so just can I get him to steal the apples this time? <laughs> Questionable. Um, so I'm a nutrition educator. I'm not a dietitian, so I can't answer the medical questions. But lucky for you guys, Matt, who will be there that day, is so you can give him all those great questions. Um, so what I'd like to do, since I don't know you, and some of you might not know each other, is go around the room and talk about why we're here. Um, so just state your name and what it is that you hope to gain from this class. I'd also like to know um, when it gets to you any allergies or extreme food aversions, so if you're not allergic to it but you will refuse to eat it. Um, it's, we've got a big group, so it's going to be hard if there are a lot of aversions and allergies, um, but we'll try and work with it. So before we do that, can I steal one of the... Markers that's on the table. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you. Um, so you can just say your name, uh, why you're here. So some of the things include, you know, if you're cooking for someone with diabetes, <coughs> if you're trying to lose weight, if you need to lower cholesterol or blood pressure, anything like that. Those are the types of things that I can cover in some of the courses. If there's a specific food that you want to learn how to cook, we can try and cover that too. So, let's start. I'm Charlotte. And I took a class similar to this because I was in a nutritional group for a semester okay. at Mondeloo. And Cooking Matters for Teens? Yes. So it'll be very similar to some of this. And I don't like peppers, Whoa. chunks of onion. Well, she'll have to get over that because I love the goats. And we're having peppers and onions today. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. She's not allergic, she just don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else? No. Okay. I'm Jamie, and I just want to learn how to budget better. Gotcha. I'm Keith. My wife took the class in Scout Egan a while back, and I loved doing it, being a sous chef, kind of all the things, and making the meals, but I'd like to be the, the, the lead chef now in uh -oh. So I found out it was going to be happening last week and so <laughs> sign me up. Great. So is there anything in particular? Just um, I, I know how to cook. I enjoy cooking. That's um, what I encounter in most of the classes. People know how to cook. It's just the little things. So right. Just, good thing just I'm make, not a chef. <laughs> just making it better. You know, okay. And I think budgeting is another good thing too. Budget? Uh, Amy, budget. Oh, 
Oh, she must okay. have been in Monday class. She, it was the no, it was the winter. Last oh, winter class. Yeah, okay. I remember Amy. Um, She's never old. I <laughs> think so. <laughs> I'm Joyce, and I just want to pick up what I missed last time. <laughs> All right. Anything specific? Not really. Okay. Just. I throw out a lot of information. Real so Joyce took the last class and she's taking it again um, to get all the information. Maybe she maybe she was too busy talking. That's most of Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that happens. Oh, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm, no. Molly. I'm Molly. And I want to learn what spices to use on what foods or herbs to use. All right. That way, that's confusing. Yeah. I'm one eater and I'd like to learn more about diabetic cooking. I'm Marv and this I'm her husband. Uh, oh, perfect. And we took this diabetic class in the hospital last year. With Margaret? Yeah. 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 And uh, she took her cl that class there to Hanford last year, uh, that mm -hmm. night thing. Oh, okay. she's on the ten dollar budget thing. Right? Okay, yeah. Were you with me or one of my coworkers? I'm not sure. We've run millions, so it's yeah. hard I, to remember everybody's face. My, my late wife had uh, sugar too. She was diabetic. My wife was here, told trying to get more tips, shop cups, in terms and budget wise, of mainly yep. food cooking, uh, cut the ter short term stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy cooking. Good. I know most of my spices to use in the cooking stuff. I enjoy that. All right. But to make things easier, I want to see and to learn more, see? All okay. right. And I don't like fish or seafood of <laughs> any kind. Fish or seafood? Oh. I hate it with a passion. Well, I was born and raised on the coast of Maine. And you were forced to do it. I was gonna say that's an unusual place to live and not like seafood. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're around it that much, maybe. Yeah. 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 I'll tell you something. I don't know. I could eat it every day. It's that salmon pasta bake. Oh, oh you can keep that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, my name is Pam. Um, my husband has had seven cardiac bypasses and is diabetic. Is got uh, high cholesterol, and um, doesn't like eating healthy. If it's unhealthy, he likes it, he'll eat it. If it's healthy, he won't eat a thing. Not. You're not going to change that. He's 74 years old and he's a thick-headed Scotsman. On the other hand, I'm getting overweight because I've been taking um, loratadine for my allergies. And it makes me hungry. And I start at lunchtime and I don't stop eating until after supper. And um, mm. I'm not satisfied with apples and healthy foods, celery and things, they just leave me wanting. I'm eating uh, cheeses by the pound and crackers by the box and you name it. And the, the way to go is, is might be considered healthy. I eat an apple, but then I eat a pound of cheese with it, that kind of, you know, and I'm lactose intolerant. Um, I also have uh, multiple food allergies. Uh, one of the things I cannot digest is onions. I end up with severe attacks, um, and um, I'm trying to think if there are any other foods, uh, acidic foods, I have to be careful of. I can, I can eat them, but in limited quantities, and um, aside from that, I think that covers it, but the big thing is, is I need to know, this one's going to get you, I have a $200 a month budget. I have eight cats and a dog, which I feed, Iams and, and uh, Nine Lives cat food. So therefore, that leaves me approximately $100 a month for good, healthy eating for groceries for my husband and myself. And um, thank God for the food cupboard. And we don't, other than that, we don't go hungry because we don't qualify for anything else other than that. It's just the food cupboard and that. And um, we haven't gone hungry yet. Good Lord up there takes care of us. Thank God. And uh, my knowledge, I mean, I can tell you tricks people have never heard of in this place, probably, and um, that people can eat to fill up. Like, um, I had a mother-in-law that used to make salmon pie, potato pie, and um, these are things that you never heard of nowadays. Um, 
you up. Talk to a young kid, they don't even know what it is. And um, different things that'll fill you up, but not necessarily things that are, I mean, it's good to replace, like for instance, I need potatoes to replace potassium because the um, limited amount of uh, fluid pills they have me on in the morning deplete my potassium, and I don't always have the money to buy the clock on to replace it. Mm -hmm. That they prescribe the potassium, huh? You can bananas? Eat bananas? Yeah, but we never get bananas, and when we do, they don't last long enough. And a, a good baked potato, a normal sized baked potato, will replace the count of two bananas. One normal sized baked potato, skin and all, will be the equivalent of two bananas. So you're better off potassium wise with that. But I mean, how many potatoes can you eat? I'm looking like the house that swallowed Chicago. So, you know, I gotta do something soon because I put on 10 pounds the last two weeks. So, yeah. You're gonna challenge me, huh? Oh, oh boy. Hi, I'm Julia, and to budget better. I'm Kendra. Um, I grow a lot of my food, so. But um, I basically learned how to cook around Crohn's, celiac, cancer, and kidney failure. Challenges. Looks like because the this girl the needs to do pizza. research. My husband has Crohn's. The rest of it's me, and I absolutely refuse to do chemo. So I have to learn how to. Coordinated and not set one of us off. <laughs> yeah. All right. My name is Crystal. Um, both my parents taught me how to cook, so I cook everything pretty much from scratch, even though I have cake mixes in the pantry. Um, Be careful, they get hard after a while. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going with that. Um, I had looked into having cooking matters class because I work with special needs teens okay. and one of the life skills that we try to teach is cooking yeah. um, but to cook healthier and so I'm taking this class so that I can share what I learn mm -hmm. but I'd like to find more uh, budget friendly gluten free recipes and I usually just X out the, uh, the regular flour and just put in brown rice flour or grind up um, Are you oatmeal. gluten intolerant or the, is it the team? It's you, me. Okay. I'm the gluten intolerant. But I just find that grinding up oatmeal and putting that in, the cookies are softer, they're healthier, and you have to tell You have to be careful though because sometimes they're processed to the same yes. factor in yep. food. Olivia? No, thanks. No, thanks. Well, she can't have red dye. That's very important for us to know. If you don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Martha, and uh, I've recently um, been diagnosed with high blood pressure. So I want to, yes, I know that, um, look at some of the ways that we can um, still have meals that everybody's going to enjoy. Um, recently my husband, who has been a stay-at-home husband, went back to work and he did all the cooking and the grocery shopping. <laughs> so, um, this is new. Good man. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So the girls are, you know, taking on some of that and I'm taking on some of it, and sometimes we just don't do it, which is bad, but yeah. grab something that's in the pantry rather than... So would you out. be looking for quick quick, quick recipes, absolutely, and uh, snacks to keep on hand to keep us out of the chip drawer. Something that satisfies that craving but doesn't necessarily give us all the other stuff that's with it. Gotcha. All right. You can actually add to that list metabolic syndrome too, because I don't absorb a thing I eat. I don't they? They've given up and they've been giving me bottles of vitamins and juices. I'm 
Jess, and I'm also lactose intolerant. Um, and I'm just here to help my mom feel better. It's a good one. It's a really good one. All right, Diane. I'm Lisa Carboni, and I'm a staff member at Madison Area Health Center, and I've seen some of your faces in there, and I am here to learn what works for all of you so that I can pass it on to other people that might not be able to attend the class. So this is really just for me, that's why it's all scribbled and jumbled. Um, the one thing I do want to say is that we don't focus so much on eating for a specific disease. Uh, most of what we talk about is for a general audience. I can try my hardest to incorporate some of the you know, medical conditions included, but where I'm not a dietitian, I can't give any advice like that. It's just the general nutrition and the, the budgeting, the tips and the tricks. Um, I can work to try and get a dietitian in here because we do have a couple that we work with and maybe my supervisor can answer some questions when he's doing the tour too. So I just want to make sure that everybody knows that ahead of time and nobody gets is April coming this time? She is. She might be the one who would get to come. Um, all right, so we'll get started. So now I'd just like to go around. It actually, no, page three in your book is where we'll start. How many of you are familiar with the, my plate? What? Seen it before? I don't know. So it's page three in your book. So my plate replaced um, the, my pyramid or the food pyramid, which is what a lot of people grew up learning about in school. I can remember fourth grade, you're looking at that food pyramid, it's got all the carbs and the pastas on the bottom, and then you skip to the top and there was that really pretty cupcake, right? Who didn't go straight to the cupcake? Because they included fats, oils, and sugars. So a couple of years ago, um, the U.S. government decided that that might not be the best way to teach people about nutrition, and they've moved to this, which I prefer. I think it's much simpler um, to think about, where you're not looking at food stacked on top of each other. We're looking at, this is what a plate should look like. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner, sometimes snacks. We should look down and see something that kind of looks like this. Um, five food groups. So obviously, it's not always going to be, you know, you've got, you're not going to have your broccoli with your apple, with your toast with a piece of meat and some dairy. You know, it could be spaghetti and it could be just one big jumbled mess on your plate. But when you're cooking and, and uh, shopping, you should be thinking about including all five food groups for meals and then including two to three for snacks. And we'll talk more about that as we go. But every recipe that we do, um, we'll try and have quite a few of the food groups in them. Um, and then we'll talk even more about making sure that each ingredient that you're choosing is a healthy ingredient from that group. Because dairy, for example, we can have ice cream, and that's a dairy product, but it's not the healthiest dairy product that we could choose. Um, so what I'd like to do now is go around and have everybody say um, their favorite meal or their favorite recipe that they like to prepare. If you can't think of one, what did you have for lunch or breakfast? And we're going to categorize it. So we'll work as a group or individually if you know it right off the top of your head. But I'll start. Um, my favorite is burritos. I love burritos. So I've got a whole wheat wrap. I use turkey burger, Greek yogurt, tomatoes, and then spinach and onions and peppers. And sometimes sweet potato grated into it, which you'll see in the recipe in your book. So, you want to get start? Chicken stir fry. Chicken stir fry. Okay, so what do you usually have? I, I hear chicken. Um, what do you put in it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> isn't that blue 
Sugar, you can get that naturally from your fruit. And oils, you know, if we're coating a pan before we cook something, we can get enough oil or buttering toast. You can get it throughout the day rather than having to go, you know, eat a spoon of butter or something like that. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right, perfect. Yeah. Kendra? Um, it would have to be my chicken alfredo. Chicken alfredo. Okay, so you probably have like a white kind of dairy sauce with that. And of course, it has Parmesan cheese in it, so. All right. <laughs> and you name it, I put in it for vegetables. Oh, all right. Perfect. Are you I think right. I am. Alfredo. We'll go for it. I'm going to lose my chalk here soon. Oh. Nice macaroni and cheese. Macaroni and cheese, do you make it on your own? Yeah. Oh. Crack the bag of cheese. Okay, do you want what I like or what I ate What you lunch? like. What I like. Everything. I, I can sit, yeah, really, in great amounts. I can sit and eat three lobsters, two pounds of steamers. you got to have butter. Um, we don't know how much, but just whatever it takes. All right, seafood. Yeah, oh, yeah, but better than that. Seafood's just like fish. You want seafood. You want lobsters. You want steamers. And you want enough to know you ate it. I don't just like yesterday, I had three hot dogs for lunch on buns with three pickles. Right? Now you know that's going to kill you. Okay, but it tasted good. It filled me up. Okay, um, there's a new recipe by wife, and I have once a month. Mm -hmm. What's that one you have to make tonight? That is. Don't look and send me down. Minestrone macaroni. Minestrone macaroni. All right, so what's in that? Pasta, I'm assuming. Okay, but we try to use the uh, whole wheat uh, pasta. Okay. I'm going to list the ingredients here as you tell me. Pasta, you can either use turkey meat. Or hamburger. Hamburger, turkey. 
like that. And then it has red kidney beans. Kidney beans. Green beans. Yep. Tomatoes. Couple of beef bouillon cubes. A flavor. Mm -hmm. Am I forgetting anything? Um, Any cheese in it? Or on it? If you want to. You, you can, can add cheese, but we down. don't. Okay. All right. That's, that's, that's the way we often. usually do it. Yeah. So. Sounds really good. Yeah. Was that your mm. your favorite too? Oh or? yes. Hers. Yes, yeah. definitely. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We like to cook together. Perfect. Yeah. Marlene, is mm. it seafood? Yeah. <laughs> We did. We discussed this. <laughs> yes, we <Monday>. did. <laughs> Mine now is that pasta salmon bake. All right. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You can make it with tuna if you want, but I didn't like the tuna because it's the salmon. It has cheese, right? Or um, milk? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> See why I'm here? <laughs> See, it's all flipping through looking for it. We'll keep going. Keep. Um, I'm a simple guy. I'm, I'm a steak and potatoes kind of guy. Steak and potatoes. Something lean, like a London bread. <coughs> That's like Parmesan that. cheese. Parmesan. <coughs> it does. And you okay. okay. <laughs> That's why uh, I have so some steak. Potatoes. Uh, oh, potatoes, I'd have the rice. I'm a rice guy. So if you I, didn't have potatoes, or no, I wouldn't have potatoes. I, I, oh, like, oh, I, like, I would okay. prefer rice to, to that. Corn on the cob, green beans. Big, big glass of milk. Milk. That milk. Okay. Milk. So go with that. Main meal? Yeah. All right. Do you make it on your own? Yeah. There's eggs in that, so wouldn't that be good? Oh, is there eggs in oh, yeah. this? Eggs, cucumbers, ham, onions. Well, salad, the potatoes, right? Probably some dairy? Or do you just use, uh, we said, do you use mayo? Yes. Oh, okay. So, okay. All right. So, something my dad makes. Not very often, which makes it all, the, all that much more better. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. <laughs> My mom's cringing. <laughs> is tuna pea wiggle. It's tuna, it's peas. I'm going to write that because I don't know what the first one is. And white milk sauce. It's like a sauce. If you can use pasta, rice, or crackers. So tuna, oh. peas, pasta, dairy. Dairy. Um, what kind of milk? milk. So good. All right. Now that I've got purple fingers, just a little bit. Okay. So, um, let's see what we notice about our plate. So, this group isn't really a fruits group. So, that's one of the things I think we'll focus on a little bit because I don't think I heard anybody. I mean, most of our fruit came from tomatoes. Um, so, granted, we're not listing what we eat all day. We're eating, you know, this I is our favorite watermelon meal. Watermelon. So watermelon is a really good one. Yep. Um, so we're we're pretty heavy with grains, proteins, and dairy. We've got a couple um, vegetables, but it seems to be a lot of them mixed in, and quite a bit of potato. Um, so we'll work on, you know, vegetables other than tomatoes. Um, we focus the whole class on eating lean, um, low-fat meats and meat alternatives. And we'll work with whole wheat or brown rice, whole grains, things like that. Um, so we focus a whole class on that. We do a whole class on breakfast foods and snacks. And then the very last class is a kind of a big celebration and we'll talk about celebration type foods. So foods that you can bring to barbecues and Christmas parties and things like that. Um, so just kind of the, the lay of the land, we'll do two to three recipes each class. We have a big group, 
Um, so we might even do more than that because what I'll do is break us into groups. Today we're just doing one because with all the paperwork and everything, we're already an hour left of class. Um, I will always try to finish right at 6 o'clock, so if you absolutely have to leave and we haven't finished, you can walk right out the door. That's fine with me. Um, does anybody have any questions after? You know, it, it's a good possibility that you didn't hear fruit because no one can afford it. Uh, fresh fruit is outrageous and almost untouchable. Nine dollars for a bag of oranges, and they don't look like they're worth spending the money on. So we'll and, talk about uh, those types of things, things like that. You can have alternatives right as of uh, frozen, which I don't like mush, <laughs> and uh, canned fruit I eat. But what have you got? You got peaches. You got pears. You got and a lot of sugar. The mixed. Come and on. well, they do have it so we'll talk, sugar free. Yeah, yeah, we'll focus a whole class on talking about. Cheese. Fresh, frozen, and canned varieties, but I promise you, we'll change your mind before the end of this class. Right, you can fit it into my hundred dollar budget, and God bless you. We'll see. So my wife and I love fruit too. We eat it all the time. Mm -hmm. She says, "I want to afford it." Yep. We give our fruit, fruit uh, stuff from the food cupboard. Thank you yep. for that. We like a fruit try habit every day when we get it. Yeah. Yep. All right. Yep. So. Right, like I said, you know, we picked our favorite meals or what we had today, so it doesn't necessarily reflect what we're eating all day long. Um, but it kind of gives us a good picture of what we're craving or what we'd like to eat. Um, so. So how do, you, how do you picture, you know, if you're using something like this, how do you think this could help you make meals healthier? Just you, having this in mind. Portions. Portions. That's why I think portions are. Portions. It's my wife and I, got, we have dishes at home about that size right there. Mm -hmm. We we plan the meals, just up one serving, put anything over up over, you put the fridge, enough so we put the freezer, we get two or three meals out of it. Small portions, what we do all the time. Exactly. So there's a page yeah. in your book. Maybe I'm skipping. Oh, page ten for you guys. So it's called portion distortion. So it's hard at first, I mean, that's what we do all the time, just every day. It is, yeah. yeah. At first it gets hard to, to um, do, but if you get into the habit of doing it, they say it takes about 28 days to make a habit. So, um, so this is just kind of, it talks about what portions looked like 20 years ago and what they look like now, mm -hmm. um, and being aware of that. So they give examples of um, soda, muffins, popcorn, um, movie popcorn, or even spaghetti. So even, you know, my plates at home, are, they feel gigantic. And really, the, the sets that you can buy now with the smaller plates are really the plates that we should use on a daily basis. And if you've ever seen the pictures of what food looks like on a really big plate, and what it looks, what the same food looks like on a smaller plate, it's just tricking your mind. Because you think you've got to fill the whole plate or eat everything that's on the plate. But if you had a smaller plate, you'd be eating less. You say in general that Europeans eat healthier, and they showed that mm -hmm. Europeans' plates are generally much smaller than yeah. the American plate. Yeah. So they fill Makes that sense. plate, but it's yeah. small. Yeah. I have the smaller plates and use yeah. them all the time. Unfortunately, I know how to stack them high. <laughs> 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 it doesn't help much. <laughs> um, all right, so does anybody use food labels when they're shopping? So the nutrition packs label? All right. Sometimes. So, I'm a diabetic and I'm a patient. I have to be all the time. All right, so this is kind of what a basic food label looks like. They all look the same because that's the law. Um, so you start out with your nutrition facts label, and the very first thing is your serving size. So what's important to know about the serving size is that doesn't necessarily mean that it's healthy to eat that much. So if we took six crackers and the serving size is six and we only eat six, we're not all set because their serving size is on soda, their serving size is on cakes and cookies. Um, so just knowing, this just helps you know that if I ate six crackers, that's 120 calories. So if you eat 12 crackers, you're doubling that. Um, with cereal is a really important one. If you've ever looked at your cereal box, it's usually about a cup of cereal on a serving size. How many people eat a cup of cereal? <laughs> My cereal bowls, I joke, I say that they're about this big, and they're mounted over about this much. You also have to think about the milk that you're putting on it. Sometimes the list will tell you on the side the calories with skim milk, but a half a cup. So if you're putting a ton of milk on it, or if you're using whole milk, you're distorting your calories. Um, 
How many people use the percent daily value or even know what it is? Mm -hmm. Use it. Um, so I honestly never really knew what it was. So how many people know how many calories you should consume in a day? So these 1,600. 1,600, so you know for yourself. They say the average is 2,000 to 2,500, but it's average. So I mean, right, and so you're lucky, and Arthur, you're lucky because you're a man. <laughs> Men get to eat a little bit more. Right. Women, we got the short end of the stick. We get to eat a little bit less. So, <laughs> exactly, but that's what we have to work with. So this will base it on a 2,000 calorie diet. The average person, even men, really don't need that much, especially if you're not active. So the biggest thing that we'll talk about is calories in, calories out. If you're really active, if you're running marathons, you could probably have way more than 2,000 calories. If you're sitting at a desk job and you're not running around after work chasing kids or something like that, um, you're probably down around anywhere from 1,200 to 1,800, um, unless you're extremely active. I was a master fitness trainer in the military for six. There you go. So you probably were eating like 3,000 calories a day. In, in <laughs> they say Michael Phelps eats like 12,000. In basic like training, so every meal was about 2,500 calories. Yeah, and they're trying to fill you up too. Yeah. So. 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. And you did gain weight. A few years ago, I had a doctor when my blood pressure went up. And they had to put me on blood pressure meds. And he kept saying, just take your pills, just take your pills, just take your pills. And I kept saying, don't I have to lay off the salt? No, no, don't worry about it. Just take your pills. And all I kept hearing was all this bad advice. And I finally got ticked off being part Portuguese, part French. And um, <laughs> decided I was going to do a test theory of my own. And I went on a diet. And it was 857 to 877 calories a day. Mm -hmm. I balanced it so that I had... Um, uh, two cups of coffee in the morning. I had uh, breakfast of one of the egg beaters uh, and uh, one slice of diet bread with, uh, you can't believe it's not butter spray. We won't go into that part. And um, sometimes a slice of that American cheese that I think is part mild. And uh, anyway, we had that. And then 10 o'clock I would have uh, you know, the little half cups of uh, mixed fruit or, or uh, peaches in the things that they had, and I would have that at 10. And at lunchtime, I would have a salad with half a can of tuna on it, light tuna, drained. It was water tuna, of course. And um, I would be very careful about the extras I stuck in it, because I'm always sticking uh, uh, dried cherries and dried grapes mm -hmm. and all these things in it. So. You have to be careful with you so doing that. So this was all on like a 900 calorie diet? It was 857 to 877 calories a day. All right. And um, then at dinner time, at 3 o'clock, I always had one of those diet bars, you know, um, um, the ones that were uh, 90 calories or less. And then at um, supper time, I would have um, one ounce or two ounces of meat, depending on what I had screwed up during the earlier in the day. And um, a quarter of a cup of starches, rice or potatoes or whatever. And I would have, um, uh, I liked green beans. You can get away with a lot of green beans for, for, for no calories almost. So I would put a cup of green beans. And um, then at, at bedtime, just before I went to bed, I would have one of those yogurts that were only 50 calories. Yeah. And I did that every single night and for two years. I was losing 10 pounds a week. I went from 162 pounds down to 116. My blood pressure was under control. I didn't eat any That's meds. That's not a lot of calories. For no, I didn't eat anything, no, but I saw, me. everybody I saw said, Jesus, you're balancing everything, everything's cool. The problem was, is I got tired of being chicken and fish, chicken and fish, chicken and fish. I thought I was going to either swim yeah, or float. You wear yourself yeah. up. You know, really, you? after, after yeah. two years, yeah. I'm looking at my husband and the other people with ribs and stuff, and I said, That's it. I've had enough. And so one of the things that we talk about a lot in this class is variety and making mm -hmm. sure. So you can, you know, if you're eating just the same color vegetable all the time, if you're potatoes all the time, or if you're green types of vegetables all the time, you're not getting all the vitamins and minerals and nutrients that you need. So each different color of any food provides a different mineral, a different vitamin. And we need all of those. So, you know, your orange provides your beta carotenes and things like that, vitamin C, and then your greens have your vitamin Ks and all that. So it's really important to eat, like I like to call it a rainbow. When you look down at your plate, you should see a rainbow of colors um, because that's where you're going to get the healthiest. And so it can be hard because people pick their favorite vegetable or their favorite fruit or anything like that and you just stick with it. Um, 
but it's important to try and get some variety. Um, so the daily value, the biggest thing with that is to know the good things on your nutrition tax label and the bad things. And so the rule of thumb is that the bad things, so your trans fats or um, total fat, things like that, your sugars, should be 5% or less. So that means that it's making up 5% of your total daily 2,000 calories. Um, and the good things, you want to look for things that are around 20%. So your dietary fiber, 13% is pretty good. A little bit more than that would be nice. Um, your vitamins, you'd want to look for anything up of around 20%. Um, so, and then moving down, so you have total fat. So it'll tell you the total fat for the product, but then it'll also tell you the saturated. Um, which means that it comes from animals. There's also some pastry items that will have some saturated fat. That's why crackers would have it. Um, trans fats, you should not see anything on the market with trans fats anymore. They're practically illegal. Um, if you do, it's not good. Don't eat them. Uh, trans fats typically come in things like pastries. Um, people used to use them for frying foods, um, but they're really just not allowed anymore. So they'll be gone you know, in the next 20 years. We won't have to deal with it. Um, your cholesterol at zero, so it's you've got zero percent, but you'd want to keep that down under five. Sodium, that's over seven percent, so you're close to that five, but you'd want to move that down if you're worried about sodium. Um, and so, in general, the greater the difference between the total carbohydrates and sugar, the more nutritious the carbohydrate. Um, dietary fiber products with about four grams of dietary fiber, or this, that's a really good product. Um, if you're looking at like bread, they're going by one slice, and most of the time you're having a sandwich or something like that, so you've got two, um, so you could get up to six. So, we'll, we'll stop with that, we'll cook. Another good thing to learn is how much, how many different foods have what amount of carbohydrates in them. Like a slice of bread is considered 15 grams of carbohydrates. If you're a diabetic, right. So if you're diabetic, you, you really can, do have to yeah, pay attention you have to, to pay attention Otherwise, to them. Not as much. I mean, and most vegetables are considered free because they're under five grams, or maybe at five grams. So um, the biggest thing with fruits and vegetables, especially if you're if, if you're watching your weight, if you're watching cholesterol, things like that. They're the yeah. best bang for your buck yeah. because they're the least amount of calories with the most amount of nutrients. So that's why anywhere you go, you're going to hear people saying, eat your fruits and vegetables. Um, because any of the health problems that we listed over there, most all of them, can be dealt with by eating more fruits and vegetables. And that's the biggest focus in this class. But you need to learn also on your fruits which ones have the most carbs in them. If you're diabetic, if so if you're, you're not diabetic, diabetic, that's not so but much that's, a concern. But that's a good way to think, even if you're not diabetic. Yeah, but you don't, so if you're not diabetic, you're not watching those natural sugars as much. You should be watching the added sugars. Right. And we'll talk a little bit about One of the big things on that list, too, is sodium, where things are hidden. Yep. My wife, one reason she took this class is because she had some health issues, that sodium was yep. huge, which like high blood pressure and stuff. We look too. at sodium but, and um, sugar a lot in all the products that we use. So when I grocery shop for this class, there'll be things that I do, and I try really hard to share them with you before we start cooking. But in the interest of time, I do want to get us right into the kitchen. So the first thing that we're always going to do before we get in there is wash our hands, um, mm -hmm. especially we're a big group. So if you find yourself you know, scratching your head or itching something, wash your hands again. Um, I'm not sure where the soap is. Did so you say sodium was supposed to be in the 5%? 5% of the We're getting fast food. You're adding fats, you're adding oils, and you're adding sugars. So when you're cooking at home, you're eliminating a lot of that. And if you do want to add sugar, if you do want to add salt, you add it on your own, you know how much you're adding. You can't go to McDonald's and say, how much sugar is in this burger? Um, and there is some, so that's the tricky part. But you'll know that if you're cooking on your own. Mm -hmm. So mad at you. Excuse me. Thank you. How are you today? Very good, thank you. All right, so I'll have everybody just kind of line up. I'm going to jump right here and um, do a little quick demo. So, um, so, the first thing is that we're going to have a kitchen full of 15 or so people, um, so just some basic safety that you might not follow. 
I was actually taught how to teach these classes, because I'm not a chef, so I had to get some of those basics, um, is how to hold a knife. I was doing it wrong my whole life. I just figured there's a handle, I grab the handle, right? Um, so what you do is you pinch the base with your thumb and your forefinger, um, which seems a little weird because there's supposed to have a handle, but that's how you do it. And then you wrap your hands around the bottom. So you've got your three fingers down bottom, but you're kind of pinching up here. This knife makes it a little bit harder, but this one makes it easier. So you've kind of got your finger like that. You're not too close to the blade. It gives you more control and a better angle. Um, so when you're cutting, you, you make like a rocking motion. And another important thing is having knives that are sharp. The worst thing that you can have is a dull knife. So purchasing a knife sharpener or just you know going out and buying new knives all the time, that's not really efficient. But having a knife sharpener is really important. Um, and so the other thing if we teach in our teens class is the claw. Um, but it's just as good for adults. Um, because how many people have nicked a finger or cut themselves? Or, yeah, I'm guilty of it too. So if you go like this and you're holding all your things like this, so it can be a little bit harder, obviously, when you have something that's kind of like oddly shaped. Um, but cutting a flat surface, so we have onions today, but cutting it so that you can get to a flat surface. But before that is just holding it with the claw. So I'm being very careful and I'm not going to cut my fingers off. The same as a knife if you're carrying something hot. Today we're cooking pizza, so you know if you're walking behind someone with that pizza in your hands, someone turns into you, that's a pretty bad burn. Um, so just being as vocal as possible. We're all going to be chatting, we're all going to be talking, but it's just important to say, hey, behind you with a knife, don't be afraid to yell. You've got to yell. You've got to do it. Um, any questions? So here's what I'm going to do, because it looks like you've already kind of grouped yourselves. I'm going to have all of you over here, because we're going to make two pizzas. And then I'm going to have all of you over here. So usually we'll make two to three recipes. And what I'll probably do at, for this class is four because there's so many people. And we'll break into smaller groups. So today there might not be something for everybody to do. Um, so let me grab my book. Actually, it's over here. Um, so the recipe for today's pizza is in your book. So when you take it home, you, you're going home with all the ingredients to make the pizza. Um, so. When you take it home to make it, you do have the recipe. So one of the basic things is reading a recipe. Um, I know it sounds kind of lame, but it's really important to read through the whole recipe, especially these recipes in the book. They have chef's notes at the bottom. So I'll give you my hypocritical example. I was making um, black bean brownies. They're in the kids' book. And it said to, if you have a potato masher or fork, mash all of the black beans. So instead of reading through the recipe, I was just mashing away. It took me about an hour. I don't have a potato masher at home. I have just a fork. It took me about an hour. I've got the black bean brownies in the oven. And I read the bottom, and it says, if you have a blender, throw everything in the blender. <laughs> Great. I had a blender. I didn't have a potato masher. Um, so it's really important to just check out those notes. And I'll always let you know if I change the recipe. So for instance, today, I changed a lot of things based on what the store had, because I had a class in Bingham last night, and I bought up all the mushrooms. So we don't have mushrooms, but we have broccoli. Um, so this is one large onion. We have that. One medium green bell pepper. Uh, the rainbow package was on sale, so everybody's got a different color in their bags, and we've got all three colors for the pizza we're going to make today. Um, eight ounces of button mushrooms, so we don't have those. Two medium tomatoes. I cut those out because it makes it really soggy, and we're putting tomato sauce on it. A block of mozzarella cheese. I bought shredded because it actually ends up being cheaper. Um, canola oil, which we've got in a little pantry thing over there. So the dough. It is. It can be cheaper to make your own dough, but it takes about an hour and a half. We didn't have that much time in this class. So I buy these. They're two dollars and thirty nine cents. So it's still pretty good. At Walmart, they eighty eight cents. There you go, Walmart. We're seeing them there because I great. just bought some. They're down where the peaches are by the deli. Perfect. That's there. You go, Walmart. Um, you're uh, you have a different brand that you're all going home with because they were all frozen. So I had to get this kind. But you're going home with the Portland pie company, which is made right in Portland, Maine. Which oh, Jim and Justin go crazy over that. Um, the then we're gonna do dried basil, dried oregano, a can of tomato sauce with no salt added. So this can of tomato sauce. How many people make pizza at home? How many people buy pre-made pizza sauce? So the pre-made pizza sauce, if you ever, don't be ashamed, if you ever um, have checked out the sodium on the back, 
you're around 418 milligrams of sodium per serving, whatever that is, it's usually about a fourth of a cup. This is a fourth of a cup and we have 15 milligrams of sodium. So this is 39 cents, no salt added. We don't even use all of this on one pizza. You could probably spread it between two depending on your preference. Um, and just the difference between this one and the can that has the salt in it is 215 milligrams of sodium. So that's a huge cut with the no salt added. Um, and we'll check those things out at the grocery store, but we'll also talk about them every time I purchase them. Um, so 39 cents, you really can't beat that. Um, I make my tomato sauce with this. For when anytime I have um, chop suey or spaghetti or anything like that, I'll buy this. I'll buy um, the diced tomatoes in a can if I like the chunky tomatoes. And then I'll add onions, peppers, garlic, and we'll season it on our own. Um, so you'll notice part of the recipe is basil, oregano, parsley, um, and I would add fresh garlic, but we can add garlic powder. I put a little bit of uh, Italian seasoning in it. Yeah, that, yeah, that's the same. It covers most of those. I think it might have thyme and like margarine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a bit easy now, Wash. Yeah. Uh, well, well, hold on. We'll have to bring them to groups. You're getting ahead of me. Um, and then also, it's optional on there, but it's turkey pepperoni. This isn't in your bags, but it's just for us to try today during class, and you can decide whether you like it. So we can make one with, one without. We'll also make one maybe without onions or something like that. Um, so that should be good. The ovens are preheated. So what you're going to do is break into your groups. Um, if one group wants to grab their book, or each group, grab your book so you can flip to the recipe and have that as a group. Um, and then you've got to rinse your veggies. We know why we rinse our veggies, right? Of Pesticides, dirt. How many people go into the grocery store to pick up something and put it back down because it doesn't look good? Mm -hmm. And then someone else is buying that. So we just want to make sure that we're rinsing all our stuff. Anything that you cut through, um, anything that has a peel. So even lemons, you want to rinse lemons and things like that because if you're cutting through that top skin and your knife is going to get that dirt on it and go down through. So you should really rinse everything. Water is sufficient. Um, berries and things like that, you can soak them in your sink with like a little bit of vinegar and mostly water with a splash of vinegar, but that works too. So get started. We've got 35 minutes and the pizza takes about 15 minutes. Um, so just break into your groups. People might want to grab books and watch the break this out pretty quick. I've got pans on the oven. Can you just bring some I say so. Do you want to see the Can you tell me about the Right, there you go. 
239. This one's oh, really? 229. That's a 10 cent. I like when Joyce was picking. Yeah, 88 cents sounds really good. That's more of my Did you like it? Did it taste good? Three of them threw them in the freezer. Nice. I like that local, local. And that was at Walmart, right? In yep. Scow Egan? Yep. You said that dough was made in Portland? Yep. Excuse me. Portland. It's so really yeah, sticky because I've had it sitting on the shelf too. The warmer it gets, the more the yeast will expand. My husband's busted. Sometimes I'll cheat and use that packing. Follow the rules. Throw it in the machine. It does not yeah, so just think about how it's going to be on the pizza, so you might want to have it in the spices. They're in the bottom there, they're in another Tupperware container inside. I've got it where you can slice it and then turn it. There you go. So it's like yeah, really dicey. You can go both ways. Make lines all the way down. Does it make it really good? Broccoli. Did you say somebody need broccoli? What's that? Broccoli. 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 Broccoli.
But if you're not talking about the fitness and the exercise, the physical activity side of it, you're losing out. So it's vice versa. You can exercise as much as you want, but if you're not looking at the things that you're cooking in the kitchen, you're really, you know, you need both to have a good balance. Being that I was a master fitness trainer, I would get that reaction when I had to help people <laughs> that needed to do stuff. Fitness doesn't mean going to the gym or playing tennis or saw a shirt or anything. <laughs> Gardening, I mean, almost everything you do, there's a list. You can exactly. find them online of, of things that, like, all the normal things you do have a caloric There's a list output. right in your book, so I'll point you really? to... I did not know that. There's an eating plan, but there's also... It might be later on in the book. It's true, though. My book is different than yours, so I'm always flipping and... Is there a table of contents on are you looking like the online nutrition resources? It's page 50. Like he was saying, fitness, exercise, all of those things, it doesn't, you don't have, I used to be the person that thought, oh, I've got to exercise, I've got to go to the gym, everyone's going to be around, people are going to watch me, I really don't like the idea of that, and I just thought, fitness isn't for me. I found and I learned that there are so many ways to exercise, and the gym is just the smallest amount. I really like exercising in a more natural environment, hiking, walking, um, snowshoeing, skiing, cross-country skiing, all those types of things that you can do, and for me, I enjoy them. Some people enjoy the gym, some people enjoy jumping weights and all that kind of stuff, that's just not for me. Um, but So this list on page 51 gives you a, an idea of what these, um, all of these activities, so you'll see shoveling snow. Probably never thought that that was super healthy for you, but it really is. Shoveling snow is a really strenuous exercise. You should be doing it right so you oh, don't hurt your back. Um, but so it shows you in general. So the amount of calories that you burn doing any exercise is different depending on weight. So a person who weighs more burns more than a person who weighs less doing the same ex exact activity. But this is just kind of a general idea. So gardening or house cleaning, for just 10 minutes you burn 50 calories. We all probably clean a lot longer than that in a day. Um, so anywhere up to an hour, you could be burning 297 calories. So if you're mopping and sweeping and vacuuming, all of those things where you're walking around and you're moving your arms, if you're doing laundry and you're on two different floors and you're going up and down the stairs, those are the things to think about. Um, pushing a lawnmower. Even they have a, a power lawnmower, <coughs> which you burn a little bit less. <laughs> Um, but then walking. Walking is one of the best things that you can do. So especially if you know you're really not into all of those other activities, just walking. Walking is a really great exercise. If you have a lot of pain and that's one of your barriers to exercising, um, pools, swimming, lakes, things like that. Swimming is one of the best things that you can do because it's low impact. So as opposed to you know getting up and going for a run if you're in a lot of pain, swimming takes away that pain because you're not pounding your feet on the pavement. Yes. Walking gives as much as running, just takes yes. longer. Yes. Yep. Um, so they give a whole thing on here, but dancing, dancing is a really good example. If you like to go out and go dancing, you can burn a ton of calories that way. Or I like to dance around the house when I clean, so <laughs> I call it a two for one. Um, swimming, jump roping, hiking, all of those things. Hiking is a really good one. Let's see, jump rope. Awesome. Jump, jump rope for an hour. I, I challenge any. <laughs> <laughs> one minute, one mile. Rope. That's, that's yeah. what we used to say. Yeah. Every yeah. minute of jump roping is equal to about a mile. <laughs> Try doing it for a minute straight. <laughs> this is well, that one. difficult. Yeah, it's uh -huh. stupid difficult. So there's other oh, things sure. too to fit it in throughout your day. So if, you know, if you're working an eight to 10 hour day or anything like that, trying to fit in an hour's worth of exercise at the end of the day can be really hard. Um, taking the stairs instead of the elevator, um, parking your car further away at work or anywhere. Um, how, many, how many people know how many steps you need in a day? Did you say need? What was that question? How many steps in a day? 10,000 10, steps in a day. You've got about a little over 2,000, I think it is, that makes a mile. So really, that's about five miles you're walking a day to you get your 10,000 steps. It sounds like a lot, but if you're working somewhere where you're kind of up and around, even in this class, we've walked back and forth, you'd be surprised. Um, <laughs> the, no, it's just it's, burning down. Lisa, actually, do you want to just check and make sure our crust yeah, isn't I think burning? You, just did. you did. You did? No, I think that's You got it. Yeah, how does it look? Okay. Um, yeah, we'll just keep it on. I'll burn anything really. Um, so, our office actually, I want to let you guys know. Yeah, so our office actually offers a free program. It's called Move More. 
Um, it, you can sign up, it's completely free, and you get a pedometer. So a pedometer is that little thing that you hook on your head and it counts all your steps. And it can be really helpful if you don't know, even if you, you know, you're just looking to see what your normal day looks like without any exercise, that can help. But also if you're looking um, to increase your steps, it can help to know where you're starting out from. Um, so some, they add a little bit here and there, because if you shake a lot, it adds some, or if you, some people put it on their foot, and then if your foot tapered, you're going to have like a million steps in a day. Um, but so what it is, is that you sign up, you get this little blue sheet of paper, and it has you track your activities, your walking, your pedometer, all those things, for six weeks. And it's broken down week by week. And then once the six weeks is over, you bring that sheet into my coworker, Christy, she looks quite a bit like me, and she'll give you a prize. We have t-shirts, lunch boxes, oh, coffee mugs. How do we sign up? You just, just go in the office. I can bring, you know what, I'll bring them to the next class and I'll sign everybody up that yeah, wants to for the next class. Yeah. Is that the same place that, that you guys are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Office we're, right, we're located right down the yeah. across from Ryan and Jug. I'll bring all the stuff next time. Maybe even Christy will come because she lives right now. So. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay, perfect. She does look a little bit like you. Yeah. <laughs> we get that a lot. She tells people that I'm her daughter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's my sister. Um, so we won't talk too much on physical activity in this class, but it is important to have both. So I would be doing an injustice to you guys if we had this whole class talking about nutrition and we never mentioned exercise. So are we gonna touch on and and how much how to go about starting? Like for instance, I got a treadmill. <coughs> yeah. And I started for five minutes and worked up to 15 minutes in, in a day or two, and then yeah. next thing you know, before you knew it, I was doing three hours a day, and my Whoa. doctor said, what are you, nuts? He said, yeah. even I couldn't do that. That's but I nice. don't, wow. I'm one of these That's people. Yeah, yeah but it didn't. What happened is, is I got all tired out, petered out, yeah. and had to go lay down and take a nap. What's the point? It's overdoing it. So I, I'm one of these yeah. all or nothing at all people. No more than 30 minutes a day? No, it's not no more. It's the, That's the minimum. So that's if you're doing minimum. three hours, obviously your body's going to tell, you know, our bodies, I always tell this to the kids that I work with, our bodies talk to us. So our body tells us when we're hungry, it tells us when we're tired, it tells us when we need to go to the bathroom. Um, listening to your body. So if three hours, it was too much. For the rest it was the day, really too, too much. much. Yeah. The minimum each day is 30, um, or some people like to think of it as 230 minutes a week. So for me, sometimes the week can just be too hectic, and I'll carve out time on a Saturday to go for a hike, or you know, there's snow on the ground, a snowshoe. Um, and so that way, I'm still getting my exercise, but maybe it's just that the week got. So do I walk 30 minutes a day, minutes three, a three day. times a week, or yeah. every day? No. Yeah. Catch me at the class help. I used to do treadmill. Yeah, workouts. there we go. Oh, all right, all right. Then I'll ask you, Keith. Thank you. If anybody needs water, I'm assuming there are glasses here, and we can just wash them afterwards. Um, but it is really hot in here. All right, so we are like four minutes away. We can. I want to check. Does anyone like water? Water, anyone?